your open source advocate and I want to give you a little intro to something called Webmin. Maybe you've heard of this before, maybe not, but it's a browser-based admin page for your servers on Linux and Unix systems. For the people moving over from maybe a Windows server environment where you've always had the clickable items on the screen to, to really manage your servers, uh, it's a little bit jarring to initially move to Linux because everything is done through the terminal, the CLI. Um, so a, a lot of people really start looking for more Windows-like server admin options, and this is one of them, and it's called Webmin, W-E-B-M-I-N. I'm, I'm set here, and Webmin by default runs on port 10,000. So I've gone to one of my websites on that port. You can see that it doesn't come up. So I'm going to install uh, Webmin here. So uh, first you just SSH into your site. So we're going to do SSH root at routemehome.org should prompt us for our password you always want nice long strong passwords so here we are and we get the message of the day it tells us what all's going on on the server here pretty pretty nice actually for a for a CLI so I'll just clear this out and we need to do a few steps so I'll go over here and kind of show you, it's really easy if you're running Ubuntu in particular, but regardless of which Linux distro you're running, you can look up the instructions the same way. So install webmin Ubuntu. This is, this is because I'm running Ubuntu on my server. So we can just click into the instructions here and it gives us a couple of different sets of instructions, but I'll just go with this first set. So first thing we're going to do is uh, update our sources list. So you just highlight that, paste it in. It's going to bring you into the editor mode. We're going to go way down here to the bottom. I'm just going to add a comment and I'll put webmin so I know what this is for. We'll go back to the web page and it gives us the actual URL for the repository. You just want to paste that in there. Make sure there's a line after it, then do control O to save. Control X to exit. Now we have to add some security keys around this. So this is going to go out there and grab that information real quick for where to get the key from. So this is the first command, which is basically go get this uh, association key. It did that. Next step, basically actually go and get the key. So we're going to do that part now there it is so it gets the key and it adds the key to the system so that it can say hey you've validated that this is a signed site that you just added so now we do our normal update process so if you're not logged in as root you do sudo and then apt update this goes out and pulls down all of the updates from any of the repositories that are set up inside of the server and then we'll do sudo apt install and we want webmin. It's going to ask if we're sure we want to do this. It tells us how much disk space it's going to use, and we let it run. This shouldn't take very long. It's usually a pretty quick install. Um, we'll talk about some things that come up on the screen right here at the end whenever it's finished. Okay, webmin is now installed, and it's telling us we can go to this URL. In this case, it's it's not correct. So what webmin does is it goes and looks at the host name of the server, and it just assumes that that's the um, fully qualified domain name, which it is not in this case. Um, so I'll talk about how to update the host name later if you really want to, but it's it's fine. I know what the host name is, so I can go to it at this port. But be aware, if you ever get this and, and you click on it, it doesn't go, there's a reason. Um, it's probably not the fully qualified domain name. So we've got it installed. Everything here should be set. So I'm just going to leave this up. And we'll go back over to our instruction page and just change that to route me home. Route me home .org, And then colon 10,000. So I didn't put in HTTPS and it's telling me, hey, this thing runs in SSL mode. So we need to go to the SSL side and we get this warning. And this is Google just telling us, hey, this is self-signed. And it is what webmin gets installed with self-signed certificates. 
So I'm just going to tell it I know this, I, I did it. I'm going to click on through. Now sometimes you get a message that says HSTS is being enforced on that website. That's something built into your browser, so either in Google Chrome or in Firefox. And you actually need to go into the settings of the browser and remove that site from the HSTS enforcement. Um, otherwise, it won't ever get to this screen here, which is your login screen. So this is your webmin login screen. And you just use your normal credentials for logging into the server in this case. So we're going to go log into this server here. And the first time you'll notice this thing goes across the top, it's loading up and it brings up a dashboard. Now this is running really fast and this is running on DigitalOcean. I always use my, I always run my VPS servers on DigitalOcean. Um, it's a great site for hosting your servers. It's extremely inexpensive and you can do a lot of stuff with these servers. Um, even though they seem like they're small servers, I have one server that runs the $10 a month droplet and I run actually four different websites off of it and I run the Webmin console on it. So we'll get to that here in a minute, um, but, but really worth it if, if you're looking for a host to host your sites. Um, it is not like your normal web host where they've got a website builder. It's just they set up a server and it's cheap, and then you can put on the server what you want. Okay, so we jump into this dashboard, and you can see here what the CPU is that's being used, and I'm not using the server right now, so it's at zero. You can see the memory, so the operating system and, and webmin and a few other things are using up some RAM, so... It's, it's all running in RAM, so you see 21% being used here. And then, of course, you can see some of the other statistics and information about your server down here. It's actually a really nice interface. Um, I, I tried this five or six years ago, and the interface was not this nice. They've redone it since then, um, so I'm, I'm really pleased with it. And the first thing I want you to notice is that right here it tells you, hey, there's a reboot that may be required because you just recently installed some updates. So once you install this, you can actually run updates from Webmin. Um, I just did it through the terminal earlier, but it's telling me, hey, you probably need to reboot because of one of the updates that it did. Now, you also get information here in this side panel, and you see the same information here, so you get a little notification bar. This thing will light up whenever you have um, updates or, or anything else going on with the server that you might need to know about, so I like that notification bar as well. And if you allow them, it gives you native desktop notifications, so I actually get them up on my on my screen as well. And I'll show that in a minute when I reboot the server. Um, First, I want to go through a few of the things here on the side panel. I, I cannot in any stretch of the imagination go through every feature of Webmin in a single video. In fact, it would probably take me 10 different videos to do it and, and not use up all of your time. So I'm going to just kind of click through some of these things and, and talk about it a little bit. So one of the main Webmin option, you have a lot of the configuration for the actual site and the server um, clickability <laughs> app is what I'm going to call it. So we'll talk about what that really means here in just a minute. So you can change the basic configuration files. You can change your language. There's some, some different settings right through here that you can do. If you expand some of these other sections, you'll see a lot of the things where you actually want to control different parts of your server. Um, so maybe you're running an Apache uh, web server or an Nginx web server. There's an Nginx module you can install for these. There's, there's all kinds of other plugins besides what you see here just kind of default added into the system. So as you click, you see it expands. It's got a nice uh, accordion style expansion here. And you see all of the subtopics that you can click on and, and see things and see different information about. So here under others, we have file manager. So if we click into that, you'll see it, it loads up a new page. And here you can see the file manager for your server. Um, you can click through this and actually navigate down through it. It's very what I would call Windows-like. Um, makes it pretty easy to get to different sections of your files in your server. So if you ever need to get into the command shell, if you come into your site and log in this way, you can just click here on the command shell. And you see it opens up a shell, and here I can actually type. And I can see slash var, and I can hit ls. And it does it in a nice web-based web um, terminal. So pretty easy to go in and actually do some terminal commands if you need to from within the GUI. Um, you can just click the X to close that. So here you can see the system and server status, so kind of another nice area. It's not exactly on the dashboard, but it's good information to be able to find. Upload and download, so if you need to add files to your server file system, you can do that through the upload and download. Networking is where a lot of people want to see a little bit more information. So here we have bandwidth monitoring. So when you come to the bandwidth monitoring, you can turn it on. Basically select the network card that you want to watch and then enable it. 
Once you do that, you can come in here and actually see bandwidth monitoring statistics for the actual network card that you're monitoring. You can also turn the monitoring back off if you're done using it. So there's a network configuration section. I am not a network administrator and I am not a network professional, so I'm not going to go into this. So a little bit on the disk system, so you can see some of the partitions here. There's a few other settings here that you can look at. Uh, this is probably going to be much more useful whenever you're actually running on a local server and not really a VPS. If you're running a cluster and you're managing it through Webmin, then you can set up some of your cluster management here and actually configure cluster management from here. And then we have a whole list of unused modules. So this is all of the modules that are here that are currently not being utilized in the system that you can basically install. And there's a bunch of modules that you can go get and actually upload into the system and start using those as well, such as Nginx. Um, some others that are out there are pretty useful. So it'd be up to you to kind of go figure out what those are and what you need. But there's a lot of stuff here. I mean, this is a really fully featured interface. All right, I'm going to go back to the dashboard for just a second here. And I'm actually going to reboot the server so that you can see what happens whenever you do that. So I'm going to reboot the server from the button right here. And it's going to take us to a different screen. It's going to say, are, are we sure we want to reboot? So we're going to confirm. Reboot's in progress. So you can see pretty quickly that it came right back up. So I can now go back to the dashboard here and it's going to load back up. So uh, another nice thing about DigitalOcean, that was a really fast reboot. Um, I mean, it took about 20 seconds and it was back up and running. And now that message is gone about rebooting the server in both locations. So I talked earlier about the indicator here, the notification icon that tells you something needs to be done on the server. So you can see we have a little number there indicating something's ready. When we expand it, we can see there's some package updates that are available. So you can click on this. It's going to bring me to the software package updater. So here I'm looking at only updates. I can see what packages are available for update and I can unselect packages I don't want to update. In this case, I'm just going to update everything. We can click on either button that says update the selected packages and it will start the update. You can follow the line up here to see what it's doing and when it's working. And then we're going to click on install now to actually start the update process. And the update's complete and it needs us to reboot, so we're going to do that. You can see up here that we lost the connection. And we get a pop-up whenever the connection is successful. And we're ready to get back in the system, so now we can just click on Dashboard. Back up and running. We can see our CPU's kind of ramped up while it's getting everything set back up on the system. So if you're ever looking for a clickable system, uh, Webmin is, is really it uh, for me as far as just managing a Linux server. There's several different ones out there. Find the one that's best for you, but I really like Webmin. It's free, it's open source, of course, so that makes it really great too. Uh, I want to talk about the Webmin configuration. So I'm going to click on that and take you in. This is really where you get into configuring the Webmin system itself and making it a super useful tool for you. But you can see all of the different options that are laid out here as far as Webmin goes. Um, so you can set up two-factor authentication, always a, a really great option. You can manage users, you can manage the server itself, you can manage user spaces. You can really manage everything from here that you would probably want to manage from the terminal in most cases. There may be a few terminal commands or a few have special scripts that you've written that of course aren't going to be covered in this. But this is a really full-featured system and, and you can really configure it to, to be even more than it comes out of the box. So it's worth your time to get in here and look at it and understand what each of these sections are. Webmin has a really great uh, online wiki that tells you a lot of information. Their, their documentation is really good. It's easy to follow and easy to figure out what to do. Um, if you really are interested in a, in a Webmin console, I highly recommend you get out there and check this one out. That's it for this week. I appreciate you joining me. If you like this, please like and subscribe so you can see more videos coming from me. 
If you have comments to help me improve, I'd really appreciate it. I want to get better at this, and I want to give you as much information as I can, but I also want it to be something that's useful for you and, and useful for your time. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.